Hallelujah. Thank you so much, my dear brother. Thank Amen. you so much. God bless you, uh, Mr. Folayo. God bless you. Thank you so much. I'm glad your wife was blessed. <laughs> I know, and like they say, happy wife, happy life. I'll, I'll God bless, bless you. Well. <laughs> I'm a yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Glory Amen. to God. All right. Um, I want to first and foremost give thanks to God uh, for the opportunity to be a blessing to the church as a whole. It is a privilege to stand as a representative of Jesus at any given point in time upon any platform. It is a privilege because one of the scriptures that have really imparted my life, I mean, all scriptures have imparted my life, but one that really stood out is in John 3, 27, where the scripture says, no man received anything except is given to him from above. So we are all recipients uh, of the grace of God. And I'm glad that God has used our ministry to be a blessing to each and every one of you. Thank you, and I thank God for the privilege. Pastor Okwe, oh, God bless you, Pastor Awolesi. God bless your darling wife, Dr. Janet Awolesi. God bless her powerfully. Uh, God continue to increase that which he has committed to your hand. I can sense God's power and presence upon this work. I can feel it in my spirit. Even as your people receive the word, it shows that you've been doing a great work teaching and preparing the ground. And the God that we serve is a God of reward. God is a God. Like many years ago, I had a man say, men, we give you our word, but God gives you reward. He's a God of reward. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that. He's a God of recompense. The book of Esther tells us that. He's a God, I mean, Ruth, uh, when, she met, when they met with Boaz, Boaz said that the Lord... We give you full recompense. I pray for you and your family, Pastor, but we give you full recompense in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank God for the leaders in the house and everyone. You are such a lovely bunch. I've not seen everybody face to face. I've seen a few, but I can see in the comments, in the hallelujah, in the amen, that you are embracing the world. What a wonderful church. Great light church. The church that embraces the world. God bless you all. Uh, keep supporting your pastor. I'm telling you, he loves you so much. I can see it in him. I can see it in him. And I can see that you guys also love him. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I haven't said amen. that. Don't, amen. <laughs> I haven't said that. I don't want to forget my philosophy <laughs> that I learned from my father in the Lord, Reverend George Adeboye. He birthed me in ministry. Hallelujah. My father and the Lord, we always say, blessed are they that keep to time, for they shall be invited back. So I'm going to start my time here, my clock watch. Here we go. That's it. All right. Compliments over. Let's go straight to the world. Glory to God. Mark chapter 11. And I'll read from verse 12 to 14. And then verse 20 to 24. I'll say it again for the purpose of emphasis. Mark 11. 12 to 14, and then 20 to 24, I read. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if aptly he might find anything thereon. And when he came to eat, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Verse 20 now to 24. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to bread remembrance, saith unto him, Master, I like this kind of people. They always remember the message of the pastor. He remembered the message. He said, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answered, saith unto them, 
have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, he thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, verse 24 says, when ye pray, believe ye receive them, and ye shall have them. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. For the next few minutes, because we're talking about confession of faith tonight, for the next few minutes, we're going to be looking at a sermon, I'll be teaching, preaching, a sermon that I've titled, Empowering My Profession of Faith. Empowering My Profession of Faith. Empowering My Profession, where well, you can call it confession if you want to put confession there, but for just my own purpose, I say profession of faith. Empowering my profession of faith. Shall we pray? Father, I thank you because you are a good God. I thank you for the grace. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your faithfulness that you have shown towards Great Life Church since inception to this particular point in time. I, Lord, I ask that you receive our thanks in Jesus' name. I now ask, oh God, as we go into the word, that you will open the hearts and the minds of every single hearer of the word, that they will not hear on the basic level, but rather hear on the supernatural level, the advanced level, where faith will be birthed in their heart. Lord, don't let them just be recipients of information, but let them be able to comprehend revelation. At the end of the day, Father, I ask that each one of us, we have this testimony that we have met with you and our lives have been preserved. Anoint me afresh for this moment, O God, and let your will be done. Jesus be glorified in Jesus' name. Satan, I hold you bound. You have no portion here. In Jesus' name. Amen. And somebody that believes Jesus shall be big amen where you are. Hallelujah. We can hear you in the spirit. Don't worry. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, empowering my profession of faith. I would like to start back with this statement. Listen very carefully. It may be a common statement, but I want you to receive it with a heart of faith. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of impact. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of impact. The word impact there simply means the action of an object coming forcibly into contact with another. The action of an object coming forcibly into contact with another. I remember some years ago, I went to preach in the church and the, type, the name of the church is the Impact Church. I said, that's good. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of impact. The word impact connotes effects. In other words, everywhere God's kingdom is, it will always generate effect. God's kingdom has never been a passive kingdom. God's kingdom have never been a kingdom on the side where it has always been a kingdom in the center of things. It's a kingdom of impact. It creates effects. The word uh, impact also connotes the word influence. So we can say that the kingdom of God is a kingdom of influence. If you, as a carrier of God's kingdom, are not influencing your environment, then I doubt what you carry on the inside of you. Because God's kingdom provides, produces impact, I mean, generates impact and influence and effect. The word effect or the word uh, 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 impact also means impression. Whenever you see God's kingdom in, his, in a place, it's always creating an impression. That's why I tell people, the word of God tells us in the book of Matthew 6, verse 10, said, thy kingdom come, how? Thy will be done. The key word there is the word done. Thy will be done. The kingdom of God is a doing kingdom. 
It's a kingdom where things are done. It's a kingdom where things are established. It's a kingdom of impact. He said that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In John chapter 1, if you read from verse 1, for the purpose of continuity and understanding, John chapter 1 from verse 1, the scripture that we all know, is that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Bible said the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 says, without Him was nothing made which was made. And verse 4 says, in Him was life. Verse 5 now tells us, he said, and the light shines in darkness. That is impact. And that's why I like the name of the church, Great Light Church. That is creating influence, generating influence, generating impact. He said, its light shines in darkness and the darkness does not, could not comprehend it. One translation says, and the light shines in darkness and darkness could not fathom. He could not understand. Darkness was thrown into confusion when light shines. That's why whenever God's light shines in a person's life, the, the works of darkness are destroyed. First John 3 verse 8, Jesus said, "For the, I mean, the word of God said, for this cause was the Son of Man made manifest that he may destroy the works of the kingdom. So the kingdom of God is a kingdom of impact. Everywhere Jesus went in scriptures, you will see impact. When he enters into a village, the entire village feels it. When he enters into a place, the entire place feels it. Now, some time ago, I was in a, a barbing salon. Let me just share this with you. I was in a barbing salon to cut my hair. And as a barber was cutting my hair, he will stop and look at me. Then he will continue. Then he will stop and look at me. Then he will continue. Then he will stop and look at me. And I said, why are you looking at me? Why are you just checking me out? Just cut my hair. And he said, no, sir. He said, as I'm cutting your hair, I'm feeling something. He said, I said, what are you feeling? He said, it's like the anointing I feel when my pastor preach in church. Are you a Christian, sir? I said, I'm a man of God. He said, yes. That is impact. And even by cutting your hair, they can feel the anointing. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of impact. Wherever you go, they should know you are there. Wherever you go, they should know that you have arrived. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of impact. When you look at Matthew chapter 21, verse 10, the Bible talking about Jesus entering into Jerusalem. The scripture says, and the city was moved. Hey, the city was moved because Jesus entered into the place. And they were asking, who is this? If you go into any business or you go into any place at all, and the impact, your impact is not felt, I want to draw a big question mark on what you carry. Because there is nowhere the kingdom of God enters into that you don't see impact. Now, I haven't said that. Listen very carefully to me. One thing that guarantees this impact is power. One thing that guarantees this impact of the kingdom is power. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. The scripture says, for the kingdom of God is not in world, but in power. So anywhere you see impact is as a result of the manifestation of the power of God. It is the power of God in us, on us, with us, and through us that guarantees that impact. No child of God can ever generate impact without power. Acts 1 verse 8, Jesus said, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. One translation says, and you shall be my tabernacle of witnesses. In other words, you will be a witness to the words that I have spoken. You are supposed to be a witness. You are supposed to generate power and you need, sorry, impact. And you need power to generate that impact. God's word tells us in Psalm 62 verse 11, he said, once have they been said, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. When Paul was speaking in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he made it very clear. He said, the reason why I'm preaching and teaching is so that your faith will not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So it is the power of God that guarantees impact. Without that power, we cannot generate impact. Now, quickly, let me give you some few things. I'll make some general statements here. We're going to get to the message very soon. Just keep following me as I lay this foundation. Now, quickly, where do we need power? Where do we need power? 
Let's look at the areas where we need power. Where do we need power? Quickly. Number one, the first place that we need power is in our, our weak areas. We need power for our weaknesses. We need power when we are weak. The Bible says in Isaiah 40 verse 29, that God give power to the faint. To them that have no might, he increases strength. No wonder Job Stewart said, let the weak say, I am strong. The reason why the weak can say they are strong is because God is empowering them. There are Christians who say things like, oh, I'm down. You need the power of God to be up. The power of God will raise you up, set your feet on the solid ground. And when others are saying there's a casting down, you'll be saying there's a lifting up. The power of God, we need it for our weak areas. We need it in our weakness. In Ephesians 6 verse 10, God's word made it very clear. Paul was speaking, he said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. I want you to understand, we need power in the area of weaknesses, in the area of our weaknesses. Where you are weak, where you are not strong, you need the power of God. The Bible says, Zechariah 4 verse 6, not by power, nor by mind, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Number two, quickly, where do we need power? Let's go through this quickly. We need power also when we are confronting evil. When you are confronting the works of darkness, you cannot confront that work with your own power. You need the power of God. The power of God is what the power of hell respects. As a young Christian, there's this statement that a friend of mine made many years ago. I'm talking about over 25 years ago, and I cannot forget. He said, when power meets power, the lesser power will bow. When power meets power, the lesser power will bow. So I want you to understand that whenever you are confronted with evil by evil, you need power to make an impact on the kingdom of hell. The kingdom of hell does not succumb to just diplomacy. No? The kingdom of hell does not succumb to just uh, explanation. You need power. The word of God says that in Acts chapter 10, if read verse 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy of Nazareth, with the Holy Ghost, and with power, who now went about doing good, healing all of them that were oppressed of the devil. Without the power of God, there is very little Jesus can do when it comes to the evil, the evil world. The evil that confronts you and I today, we need power, the power of God to confront them. That's why Jesus said in Luke 10, 19 to his disciples when they came back from a serious crusade meeting and they said even the devils were subject to us in your name. Jesus told them in Luke 10, 19, he said, behold, I give unto you power. I like that. To tread upon, look, if you try to walk over the devil with that power, he will walk all over you. He said, you, I give you power to tread upon serpents, upon scorpions, and upon every power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means, I like that, nothing shall by any means hurt you. When you are walking under the power of God, you can never be a meat on the devil's dinner table. So you need power to confront evil. In Mark chapter 3, if you read from verse 14 to verse 15, let me read it quickly. He says, and he ordained twelve, and they, that they should be with him, and that they might, and he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. So we need power to confront evil. I pray for you that tonight may power descend upon you to be able to confront every attack of the evil one against your marriages, against your family, against your marital destiny, against your finances, against your career, in the name of Jesus. There are certain things that you cannot address when it comes to progression without the power of God. Jesus came down from the Mount of Transfiguration, having, having an encounter with the glory of God. He came down and he saw that his disciples were struggling. Let me say this to you. Those who go to the mountain top for glory visitation never struggle with what those who are at the bottom of the mountain struggle with because they have power. When he came down in Matthew 17 and they were saying, well, we could have, and the man, a man came and said, I brought this, my son to your disciples and they could not heal him. You know what Jesus said in Matthew 17 verse 21 to his disciples when they said, well, how come we could not heal him? He said, listen to me, this kind 
There are kinds. Are you listening to me? There are kinds. You have dealt with headache in time past. I know you have commanded ulcer to disappear, but there are kinds. There are kinds. He said, these kinds go out not. They don't leave without fasting and prayer because fasting and prayer generate power. It generates power. So it's important for us to know that to deal with evil, we need power. Number three, quickly, I've got to rush through because of time. Another place, area where we need power. When do we, I'm talking about when you need power and where you need it. Is regarding your divine assignment on earth. Your divine assignment on earth, no matter how small, how big, how medium it may be, requires power for delivery. You need power for delivery. You cannot deliver on a divine mandate without power. I always say this to people. When people ask me, oh, sir, oh, oh this is what happened when you preach this, this. I said, yes, I ensure that when I stand to minister, I stand under the power of God. Without power, you can't generate impact. The lives of men are so complex. The complexity that are in the, in, in the lives of people require God's power to straighten it out. It's like a spider's web. If you know what, if some people sit down to tell you their problem, you will keep quiet. And you'll be like, oh my gosh. It is God's power that knows how to cause bones to come to bones. It is God's power that knows how to bring Lazarus from the dead back to life. It is God's power that is able to turn what men said was impossible. Luke 1, 37, with God, all things are possible. Power is needed for your divine assignment. Whatever role you play in church, you need power. Somebody say, I'm just an usher. You need power. Who do you, do you know who you are shaking? Do you know who you are touching? Do you know who is coming to church? Do you know that that person is a witch eh, from your village and is coming to church and you are the first person they will see? Do you know whether they have been sent to you to make sure that they will touch you and you are about to shake their hands? If you don't have the power of God, you will shake their hand and will transfer things to you. But when you have the power of God, you will shake their hand. What they want to transfer will die. Are you hearing me? He said, every weapon from that fashion against you shall not prosper. Every mouth, oh, I feel God's anointing. Every mouth raised up against you in judgment, you will condemn. I pray for you right now, whoever you may be, whatever has been planted against your marital destiny, whatever has been planted against your progress in life, today, by the power of God, like Jesus said to that tree, no, not again. I cast it to dry up to his roots. In the name of Jesus. It's a power of God. He changes things. When you when any, give any assignment that you are involved in, you need God's power for it. Look at Luke chapter 4. Hear me? Verse 14. He says, and Jesus returned. I like that. He returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Jesus never went into Galilee casually or without power. He came with power. If you look at verse 18 of the same Luke chapter 4, when Jesus entered the church and then they delivered unto him the scroll and then he opened to a place in Isaiah 61 and then he began to read. What did he read? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For he has, for the Lord that anointed me to preach the gospel. You have to be anointed to preach. You have to be empowered to preach. You can't preach because you can explain scriptures. You can't preach because you have an intellectual understanding of what Romans or Paul was speaking in Ephesians. Intellectualism cannot threaten the kingdom of hell. It is power that pushes boundaries back. Oh, I pray for you. Every boundary set by the enemy in your life, in your finances, that you have not been able to push back. By the power of God, through faith work conference, we are pushing boundaries back. Those boundaries are lifted. Those boundaries are removed. Those containment are taken away. Those limitations are eradicated. And now prophesy, go and prosper. Go forward in the name of Jesus. The Egyptian you see today, you will see them no more. You need the power of God for your assignment. So important. Micah chapter 3 verse 8. Micah was speaking there. He said, but truly, Micah, prophet Micah, Micah 3 verse 8. He said, but truly, I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might. Look at that. So declare. Look at that. 
to declare unto Jacob his transgression and unto Israel his sin. I'm full of power. In other words, I cannot carry this house without power. Matthew 10 verse 1, the scripture says, and when he had called, you see that, called, those who are called need power. He said, when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. He gave them power. Anyone who is called require power. If you are called to usher, you are called to organize, you are called to decorate, you are called to minister, you are called to sing. In fact, I tell people who need praise and worship, you need power. You don't need, look, thank God for skill. Skill without power will leave you empty. You need God's power over your skill. You need the power of God that makes the difference. You will see in the book of Luke chapter 9, Jesus there again, when he was sending his, uh, his disciples out in Luke 9 verse 1 to 2, he was going to send them on an error. He said, and then he called, look at that, his disciples. He called them. He called them. When you are called, you require power. That's why Hebrews Paul said, let no man take this honor upon himself, except he is called like Aaron was called. It is power that differentiates between the called and those who are not called. When you are called, your rod will blossom. Your war rod will burn in the midst of every other rod against you. The kingdom of God requires power. It's a kingdom of impact. Now, finally, let me give you one more area, which is what we're going to be talking about for the next 22 minutes. Quickly, one more area where you require power. You require power when you speak. You require power when you speak in your words, in your profession. In your confession, you know when people tell, you know, I tell people about, oh, they say, well, there's a repetition. If you repeat it over and over, it will come to pass. Listen to me, that can work on some levels. But when you come to another level where you want to take over, when you come to a higher level, you need power in your profession. You need power in your confession, in, the, in what you say. Luke chapter 4, if you read verse 32, say, and they were astonished. They were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. People today make confessions that are empty. Confessions that are empty, rather. Professions that are empty. You speak the word and the word falls to the ground. You speak, you, give, you, you utter statements that have no respect from heaven at all. You declare things, you decree, say, I decree, I decree, I decree, and nothing happens. That means your words lack. There should, it should be that when you wake up in the morning and you say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Power to be in those words. Our words must carry power. The one translation of Luke chapter 4, verse 32, he said this, let me read it to us. He said, they were amazed by his teaching because he delivered his message with authority. I pray for you. May your words not fall to the ground again. He said, I pray. He said, yeah. He said, his message, he delivered it with authority. Our words are to be with power. Our profession. When we make profession of faith. Hallelujah. There should be. The, 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 the words around us should feel it. Both the physical words and the spiritual words should feel it. Gates should move when we speak. Armies should flee when we speak. Demons should shake and tremble when we speak. Our profession of faith today is not generating result because it lacks, our words lack power. The Amplified Translation of Luke chapter 4, follow me quickly, in verse 32, listen to what it says. It says, and they were surprised, almost overwhelmed, at his teaching, because his message was given with authority, power, and great ability. Jesus' words were with power. Our words should be with power. Our words, our profession, our, our speaking, our speech should be with power. Mark chapter 4, if you read verse 40 to 41, when Jesus stood up in the midst of that, of that, of that storm and he was able to calm the storm and calm the sea, look at what the disciples said in verse 41. They said, what manner of man is this? That even the wind, 
Can you imagine that? The weather is listening. Listen to me. That is the level you are coming to. The wind will listen to you. Are you hearing me, somebody here? I said the wind of life will listen to you. If you believe it, shout a big amen where you are. Let your neighbor hear you very well. The wind will listen to you. We need, look, you have to be listened to. You have to be heard. When you speak, angels should run. When you speak, demons should disperse. When you say, let it be, it will be. That's why Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on earth is loose in heaven. There should be power in your word. I discovered this many years ago. Many years ago, under my father and the Lord, Reverend George, I, go I discovered this. So one day, my wife, my wife was pregnant and then she was about to give birth one particular day. And then the baby was, she gave birth to the baby and the doctor called me aside, the pediatrician. Said, I'm so sorry to give you this bad news, but your baby will not live for more than seven days. I said, really? I said, why? He said, our lungs are not properly formed. And according to what we've been taught in school, medical school, I am so sorry. I've consulted with other consultants and they have all come to this agreement. Your child will die in seven days. Can you imagine that? They spoke. But the Bible says, I looked at the man in the eye. I said, sir, the scripture says, Aribaru Satayaba. Who has spoken and it came to pass? When the Lord has not spoken. To subvert a man in his court, the Lord carry by Yadaga. We not, what? We not agree. The Lord will not agree. I said, no problem, sir. So I went to the baby where she was in the incubator with all manners of, you know, tubes, but, you know, everything over her body. I looked at it. She looked like an experiment in a, in, a, in a lab. Can you imagine? My baby. I looked at this girl. I said, hear me today. Hear me today. Every good and every perfect gift coming out from above. From the Father of light, in whom there's no variableness nor any shadow of turning. I say, you will not die. That's what I'm saying. They say you will die. I am here to say you will not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said that and I went home. I went home. So on the seventh day, they all came, you know, coming to carry my baby's uh, dead body. They were all gathering, uh, coming to carry the dead body. My wife was sleeping on the bed and then they opened the door and the nurse cleaned. He said, what? When the nurse screamed, every, my wife woke up and said, what is it, what is it? He said, did you do this, madam? What? Every single tube on this baby's body, this baby has removed everything. Everything. The one in her nose, she has removed it. The one in her head, she pulled it out. The one, the, the, the drip in her hand, she pulled it out. Everything disconnected. Everything disconnected. And then they tested her. Her lungs was functioning well. Every, the man, the pediatrician came later and said, excuse me, he went to a room and brought a medical book, a textbook and opened the textbook and read to me, this is what will happen. How did this happen? I said, I spoke over our life. It is time for you to speak over the life of whatever they say will die in your life. I join my faith with yours today. Whatever they have concluded on in a negative way, I cancel that negative confession. I cancel that negative declaration. And I say, life, Ariba Sataya, life in the name of Jesus. That thing receive life now. If you believe it, say a big amen. Wave your right hand to Jesus. Say, Lord, life in that area of my life. Say, life enters there. We need power. The man came for the naming ceremony. He said, I have to come for the naming ceremony. Over 400 people gathered for that naming ceremony. Over 400 to see a baby that was com committed to death for God brought back to life. Why? Because I spoke over her. Speak. <laughs> speak. Speak the word. Speak it. I'm coming to that anyway. We need our word. Jesus commanded the wind. Wind be still. Wind be still. And the wind still. And the storm and the sea calm. And he said, what manner of man is this? That even the wind listen to him. From today, the wind of life will listen to you. From today, the raging storm in your life will hear you and will obey you. If you believe that, tap your chest and say, I receive that in the name of Jesus. Ecclesiastes 8, verse 4. He said, where the word of a king is, there is power. There ought to be power. You are a king. Do you know that? The Bible says you are a royal priesthood. 1 Peter 2, verse 9. That is who you are. We are the word of the king is. There is power. 
you use that word say no that's not my portion i reject that in the name of jesus christ that does not belong to me that is not my own part that is not my own portion Luke chapter 4 verse 36, the Bible says here that they were all amazed. The people were amazed and spake among themselves, what a word is this? Can you imagine? Because the words of Jesus had in power. What a word is this? For with authority, listen, and power, he commanded on clean spirit and they come out. With authority and with power, he commanded on clean spirit and they come out. From today, I pray that your words will carry power in Jesus' name. Now, as I begin to tie this all up, get ready for this. Listen, how to empower your words with power? And I will share with you only two today by the grace of God. How to empower your words with power so that when you are making confessions, your confessions will generate power. How to empower your word with power? I'm talking about empowering my profession of faith empowering my profession of faith number one if you want your words to be with power speak scriptures speak scriptures speak the word the word in itself is an embodiment of power the word of god in itself is an embodiment of power hebrews 4 verse 12 tells us for the word of god is quick and powerful i like that is quick and powerful. When you speak what God has already spoken, your words will be with power. You've got to speak the word when you are making profession. Let the word be in it. That's why I tell Christians, know the word. Luke chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, that shall man live by the attack of the enemy on Jesus in the wilderness of temptation, Jesus will respond with, it is written. And after Jesus said it is written, have you noticed? The devil never questioned it again. Use the word in your confession. Put the word behind your confession and your words will be with power. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, let not this book of the Lord depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate upon it day and night. It is important that we know the word, John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Know the word. Psalm 1, if you read from verse 1, blesses the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, that sitteth not in the seats of the scornful, that standeth not in the ways of the sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In this law doeth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. He shall bring forth his fruit in season. His leaves will never wither, and whatsoever he lays his hands upon shall prosper. Word, know the word. The word is key. Knowing the word is key. Know what the word says about you. So when you are making a profession, let it be that it is the word that is coming out of you. Scriptures have power. Scriptures has in they have it has in in inherent power. There's power in the in scriptures. Inherent power in the scriptures. Inherent power in scriptures. So when you want your words to be with power, let it be scriptures that you are pumping out. Let it be scriptures in your profession. Don't just say, hey, the Lord will help me. Add the scripture to it. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, for whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, who maketh the heavens and the heart. Come boldly unto the throne of grace, and obtain mercy, and receive grace, to help in times of need. Psalm 48 verse 1, the Lord is a present help in the time of trouble. Give us help, O God, for vain is the help of man. When you have said that, now say, the Lord will help me. Let me be in it. Just make positive confession. I don't, I don't believe in positive confession. I believe in word oriented confession. Are you hearing me? Saying what God has said does not make you a criminal. <laughs> I tell people, I said, I will prosper in this world. It is your, I, I have chosen to prosper because God's word tells me that. That I will teach the, He said, I'm the Lord God, Deuteronomy 8, verse 18, that give the power to get well. So please, if I'm rich, don't be hungry. It's because I, I just stick with the word. My father in the Lord, Reverend George, taught me, stay with the word. Are you hearing me? Stay with the word. I learned that for 18 years under him. Stay with the word. 
The word works wonder. That is our own WWW. The word works wonders. We stay with the world. We stay, no wonder in Matthew 8 verse 8, that's, that, that centurion man had that understanding. He said, don't come to my house. Speak the word only. Speak the word. When you speak the word, you are speaking power. I don't know where you are sick. I don't know where you are at pain. I don't know where you are suffering. I don't know what has, what keeps you up in the night that's not allow you to sleep. But I'm here to speak over that day. Hear me today. I'm speaking the word over it. Wherever there is struggle, wherever there is pain, wherever there is agony, the word of God says, if God give peace, who can give trouble? I speak peace over it in the name of Jesus. He does not have a choice. He has to hear me. Scripture is what I'm saying. Scripture that is speaks. He said the word of God is quick and powerful. I like that. Sharper. Oh my Lord. Look, this word we're talking, this word is sharper. Somebody say sharper. <laughs> Nothing can be sharper than sharper. Are you hearing me? Even when he wants to say, if something is the sharpest, say he's sharper than the sharpest. Are you hearing me? God is greater than the great. God is not the greatest. He's greater than the greatest. The greater one, he that is in you is greater. He's the greater one. Are you hearing me? So whoever wants to claim greatest, claim it. My God is greater. So nothing is sharper than sharper in English language. Sharper than the sharpest. The word is sharp. Sorry, I don't want to speak my native language. I don't. I know some of you, if I say it now, you'd say I'm speaking in tongues. But it's sharp. Have you ever seen a sharp knife before? In those days, I used to follow my mom to the market. And when they get to the butcher, and they take two knives. Sharp, sharp, sharp. You, you see sparks. <laughs> you de- de- when they put any it up, you see the piece. They just cut it and it does sparks. Sharp and only sharp. He said the word is sharp. Whatever is strong in your life, working against your life, may the sharp sword. The Bible says that the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, begin to cut them down. Now, 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 now. If you are a recipient of that word, say I receive it. <laughs> it's sharper than the sharpest. Let's go on. Sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing. I like that. God's word pierce. It pierce. When you are speaking the word, have this imagination in your head. It's going in. <laughs> He's piercing through. <laughs> He's moving through. <laughs> when you begin to speak the word, when you begin to say no weapon from the fashion, you have you had a bad dream overnight. You wake up, cancel the dream. In the name of Jesus, that is not my portion. I cancel that evil dream. I replace it with life because God's word has declared that no weapon from the fashion against me shall prosper. Any, any, any opposition of hell that stands in your path, the Bible says that you will run through a troop. You will leap over the wall. Declare it. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And you everlasting don't be humble. For the king of glory coming in. Somebody say, hallelujah. It's piercing. Even the dividing asunder of soul. Can you imagine? The word can affect souls. Oh, God of man. Now speak over the soul of man. Speak over the soul of man. Many years ago, when we started out in our ministry, oh my God, my time. Okay. <laughs> Many years ago, when we started out in the ministry, listen to this. A man came to us, the manager of the hall that we're using. Then we're moving and from place to place, you know, like, like Israel was moving from place to place, like Jacob was moving. Is it when you are starting now, you move from place to place? Even Abraham moved from place to place. That's my own. When people are asking me, hey, Pastor, why are we moving? Ah, I say, I'm just t- t- in the scripture. Isaac moved from place to place. Abraham moved from place to place. Israel moved from place to place until they get to where God has designed for that. So, in case you are moving from job to job, don't worry, you are coming to a place of rest very soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, this, so I told I told the man as the man came to me and said, you know what? Uh, 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 we, we we want to terminate your contract. And as a result, because you people when you do praise and worship, you are so happy, you are so joyful. People around there feel that you know they were talking about mental health, that the praise and worship was affecting their mental health. Uh-uh. Praise and worship affecting people's mental health. I said, okay, no problem. So on Monday, come and see me. We will terminate your appointment. So I went home and told my wife, like the apostles went home and told their company. And then we stood up and prayed. And after we prayed, I said, Father, this man, I called his name, he shall not be able to rise up on Monday from his bed. He will not die. He will not just be able to rise up. Don't kill him, Lord, but he will not be able to make that meeting. That meeting will not hold. <laughs> Amen. Because you cannot stand against the court of the kingdom. I said, I don't want him to die. He will be alive. 
You see, don't let your enemy die. They must not die. If they die, where is the beauty? They have to live long to see the goodness of God over your life. Amen. <laughs> They will not die. Are you listening to me? I don't believe in dying. For that die. No, they must be alive. They will be well and okay. But they will be the one that will go and say, I said this, but see what God has done in his life. That's what makes your testimony even more beautiful. So on that Monday morning, the secretary of the man called me. He said, Anthony, how are you? I said, I'm fine. He said, sorry, my God cannot make the meeting this morning because he could not rise from his bed. I said, oh my God, I, I feel for him. Please tell him that is in our thoughts and prayers. Of course, in our thoughts and prayers. We're just praying for something else. <laughs> you understand? What am I going to say here? We spoke that word, heaven hand. From today, heaven will hear you. From today, I say, heaven will hear you. Hell will obey you. But speak scriptures. Matthew 22, verse 29. Oh my gosh. Oh. Jesus answered and said, You do hear. Why? Not knowing the scriptures or the power of God. Scripture is connected to power. Luke 5 17. Jesus was preaching the place. The Bible says, As Jesus was teaching, the power of God was present to him. God's power is associated with, hear me very well, with. The scriptures. Speak the scriptures. Let me show you an example quickly because of time. I have to jump over so many things because I want to get to the next point here. Listen very carefully to this. In Luke 24, verse 32, the Bible said, I'll read, and they said one to another, These people were on the road. This is after Jesus has risen from the dead. These disciples were on the road of Ima, to Himaios, that village. And then the scripture said, Jesus walked and met with them. But they didn't know it was Jesus. But listen to what the scripture said. For you to know that there is, there's power in scriptures. So they didn't know it was Jesus until they got to Emmaus, where they, Jesus opened their eyes and that's it was Jesus. But listen to their testimony in Luke 24, verse 32, this disciple. And they said one to another, did not our heart, look at that, did not our heart burn within us? Why was their heart burning? Look at it. While he talked with us by the way, while he opened to us the scriptures, when the scripture is open, your heart will burn. The psalmist said, the fire burneth. Your heart will burn. Because scripture studies. In Mark 11, verse 1 to 6, Jesus taught his disciples to go into a village that is against, that is over and against him to get a donkey. Listen to what happened. Jesus said, when you get there and anyone challenge you, tell them that the Lord had need of it. Do you know those guys got there? They only repeated what Jesus said. When you quote scriptures in your confession, you are repeating what Jesus said. And when you say what Jesus said, they will let your donkey go. Hey, are you with me, somebody here? The Bible said they just said the same thing Jesus said, and that was it. The disciples just repeated the words of Jesus. When you are speaking the word, you are repeating the words of Jesus. Now, number two, how do I, how do I get power into my word? Number two, and I've got to close with it. Pastor, just give me two minutes, please. Just two minutes and I will wrap this. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, because already 44 minutes now. We have only 30 seconds left. So just give me two minutes, please, sir. I will try and wrap this up. Second thing, quickly. Oh, my God. Second thing that you need to do to bring power into your word. Speak with your heart. Speak with your heart. This confession you are making, is there a connection between your mouth and your heart? Is, there, is your heart in it? Now let me go back to our text quickly. Listen very carefully. In our text, let me open this up for us. Jesus was coming into this village and he saw this big tree afar off. Hmm. And the Bible said he became very happy. Now when you are happy, that means your emotions, you know, your emotions are in a good place. Oh, I'm going to eat a fruit. Glory to God. I'm going oh, I'm gonna eat fruit. I've just seen McDonald's on the way. Jesus was happy when he saw McDonald's. Oh, I'm going to eat fruit. On getting there, the scripture said he did not find fruit. Now, what do you think happens when you are seeing something, you believe it is something, and then you got there and it's not. Let me even shock you. Before you marry, you thought she was all of it. Or you thought he was all of it. Then you marry. Your first night, the man was changing gear like he was a 9-11 for my village. If you go to gear one, you see him go to gear five. And then you're like, what? Do you know the first thing that, that hits you is this? What? You are sad. 
you are hungry. So the Bible said he came and said, what? No fruit? How do you think Jesus felt? You think he was, oh, he was, someone said he was a spiritual man. He was just saying, no, I'm happy. No, no, no. Jesus was not happy. Jesus looked at that tree. And in that moment, Jesus spoke from his emotions. He spoke from the way he was feeling. Are you hearing me? Don't get me wrong. Jesus did not rule by his flesh. No. He spoke from his heart. That's what I'm trying to say. His heart was in that statement. No man gives fruit of thee anymore. Forever. His heart was in that statement. A lot of us make confessions that, has, that our hearts are not in it. If you read Mark 11, 24, he says this. He said, whatsoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and does not doubt what he saith in his heart. If your heart is not in it, hear me very well, you cannot see the act of God collaborating it. Your heart has to be in it. The heart is the source of life in the world that you speak. If your heart is not in your confession, you are playing games. If your heart is not in what you are saying, you are joking. If your heart is, if you are speaking words that are casual, speaking words that has that's not, if not with your heart, then let me say this to you: those words will lack power. You require your heart in what you are saying for there to be power. The heart of Jesus was in those words. No man eateth fruit of forever. His heart was in it. Our heart has to be in it. Our heart, listen to me, is the source of the light in the world. Proverbs 4 verse 23, he said, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. One translation put it this way, he said, watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Another one, the New English translation says, Guard your heart with all vigilance, for from it are the sources of life. A lot of us make confessions. Our hearts are not in those words. We just say empty words. We say it, it shall be well with me. Is your heart in that word? Is in that statement? You do, do you feel that it's coming from your heart? If your heart is not in your profession, God's act will not validate it. Your heart has to be in it. The power of God will not accompany anything that is not heart-driven. If your heart is not involved in it, you will not see God working with it. So your mouth and your heart has to work together. I don't have time, but I'll just give you these scriptures. Write them down, please. In Romans 10 verse 9, that if thou confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart, your heart has to be in it. You can't tell a woman I love you without your heart being in it. You can't. You can't tell somebody, oh, I appreciate you without your heart being in it. Romans 10, 10. He said, for with their heart, man believeth to righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. Your heart has to be in it. Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and then the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Time will not permit me today. But I would like to close here. Our time is up. Thank you for that extra two minutes, sir. But listen very carefully to me. If you want power in your world, speak scriptures. If you want power in your world, let your heart be in your profession. Let your heart be in it. Don't speak casual words. Don't speak empty words. You have to speak and your heart must be in it. Because where your treasure is, there will your heart be. So for those statements and those words to be treasure. Your heart has to be in it. When your heart is in it, that's what makes all the difference. Tonight, I pray, may God Almighty cause you to begin to see power in your profession, in professions of faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak scriptures and put your heart in what you are saying. God bless you. Shall we give God thanks for what we have had tonight? Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Never speak a word now without your heart being in it. Your heart must go with it. Your heart must follow it. Your heart must be behind it. It is when your heart is with it that the acts of God will validate it. It's when your heart is in your word that the acts of God will validate it. Without heart, God will not have respect to those words. Without your heart in it, the devil will not even hear you at all. 
I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I promise to pray tonight. So I'm going to pray for each and every one of you. From today, I prophesy over your life. Whatever it is that you are going through, whatever it is that you are trusting God for by faith, may the words of your mouth begin to command respect from today. May you begin to command respect by what you say. May the winds of life answer to you. May the winds of the Spirit answer to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever you lay your hands upon shall prosper. I release God's power over your life from today. No longer will your life lack power. Power will accompany you to wherever you go. Thank you, Father. I commit them to your word of grace that is able to build them and give them an inheritance among those who are sanctified. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, Bishop Lawrence, <laughs> this is, um, people are saying fire. Um, <laughs> wor words actually fill me. I'm trying not to be, as you said, not to be casual or empty in my words, but um, with all my hearts, with all our hearts, God bless you. Amen. Uh, God keep you and may this anointing continue to overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's just take a moment to just pray for Bishop as he has shared um, with us this past two days. Uh, so people are asking for more. People don't want you to stop. Some people are saying, what about our mantle? You know, yes. uh, and because of the restriction of time, uh, because you are, uh, as you said, your your father's son. <laughs> that people are waving their mouth to the sales guy. Okay, just hold on. Let me just, just give me a minute. Can you raise your mantle? Sorry for Mr. Falai, just one minute. Your mantle raise your mantle. Anything. Yes, your Good. mantle. Anything, you paper, anything. Today. You know what we're talking touch about. Touch the screen. I'm going to touch my screen with this. Touch your screen with it. Touch it. Touch it. Touch your screen with it. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you because scripture says out of the body of Paul were taken handkerchiefs and aprons and they were laid on the sick and they were healed. The scripture also says that a woman said, if only a neighbor touched the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Therefore, Lord, I pray over every man to touching the screen upon which they are watching me. Let there be a transference of power let there be a transference of anointing. Amen. Whatever they lay that mantle on, confessing scriptures, Jehovah, let that be impact for good in the name of Jesus. Let that be impact for good in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless Praise you. God. Praise God. Praise Glory. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am looking forward to outrageous testimonies. Amen. If you if you heard the mantle testimony from yesterday, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, God bless you. Um, God keep you. What a great time in God's presence this has been. Uh, we can't thank you enough for what God has used you for this past two days. We hope that this will not be the last time we see you um and uh we love you we can't wait to see you physically i know we're limited by this virtual environment but, but god bless you for honoring our and our request and um even Thank as you. you exposed them to us more grace to you from the Amen. mighty name of jesus praise god great light church and all our guests and all our friends i trust that you've been blessed um it's amazing how quickly time goes when you're having fun or in this circumstance when you're in the presence of god um this is only the beginning we're not even halfway through yet it will be utter selfishness to keep this to yourself so as we round up um we know that we can't come to god's presence um without offering a gift for those that want to give um offering and those that want to give ties the details will be projected on our screens um we learned a couple of things today uh, we learned about the power of our word in confession, in our professions. So whatever it is that you do as the seed, release it in faith, command scripture over it, and tie your heart into it. This is not just a simple act of giving because we are told to do so. But this is something from the heart. And may God bless you as you do so. May God bless you as you do so. So this continues, um, we know, tomorrow. 
And what I mean by that is that we have a prayer meeting um, in the morning at 7 p.m. At 7 a.m., sorry. And then we will have another virtual session tomorrow at the same time at 7 p.m. Please, 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 please do not be late. Do not miss out. Tell your friends. We have a Reverend Jagade that's joining us tomorrow. By the special grace of God, all the ministering uh, um, uh, men of God um, have actually been specially curated for this event. So it's about layering upon layering. You can't afford to miss tomorrow. Please tell everyone that you don't see on today's call. And may God bless you as we do so. Praise God. Let us bow our heads even as we round up today. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for this opportunity to come before you. We thank you, O Lord, for the opportunity to put our faith into action. We thank you for your man, O Lord, that you have used today, Father, to teach us about what it means to be able to walk in your faith or what it means to be able to speak things into life and speak from the heart even as jesus demonstrated to us father we pray that even as we go in your power and as we go in your authority oh lord every spirit of emptiness and casualness in our words father let it not be our portion in the mighty name of jesus father give us the grace to always embed ourselves and our hearts in your word and let it come forth powerfully let it germinate all lord fruits in the mighty name of jesus even as we're given our offering and our tithes all lord today may it be to the glory of your holy name we commit the rest of the week into your holy hands. We pray that you, Father, shall take full and absolute control. We pray, O Lord, for every other procession, Father, that it shall go according to your perfect ordination. Father, those that are not here today, Father, we pray that it shall guide their steps even to the rest of the week, O Lord. And for those of us in attendance, O Lord, may we not miss out on the blessings that you have prepared for us, O Lord. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed amen amen and amen amen let us share the grace together in fellowship may the grace of the lord, the jesus, of the christ, lord jesus christ the love of god, god and the sweet fresh of the holy spirit, spirit be with us now and forever amen amen surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall be the 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 Amen. 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 Amen.